You'll start off by going to the library homepage listed on the front of your library card. Select Research, then Research Central. On this page, you'll see a list of our different reference guides. Three of them will be especially helpful for remote learning. Those will be Educator Resources, Homework Help for Kids, and Homework Help for Teens. When you click on one of these guides, you will see the overview of that topic in the center. On the right are quick links to databases, books and more, as well as web links. As you scroll down the page, you come to the databases that we feel would be helpful for this given topic. On the right is a books and more section with a spinning wheel of book titles. Down towards the bottom are external web links that we feel are helpful for this subject. That is an overview of our reference guides. Start off by going to the library homepage listed on the front of your library card. Select Research, then Research Central. Next, select Databases A to Z, and then click on G for Gale eBooks. Once you click on Gale eBooks, you'll need to log in with your name, card number, and PIN. Gale eBooks is a great resource because it gives you instant access to a variety of different reference eBooks on many different topics. You can read the full text of the book right on your computer or other device. This database allows you to browse different subject collections or narrow your search using your own keywords. This is a great starting point for students who are doing a research paper. To search by different categories, scroll down and you'll find some on the left-hand side of the screen. For example, students can click on the Technology section to get different examples of aspects of technology they might want to research. For example, they might in be interested in this book on laser cutting. If a student already has a topic in mind, they can enter it in the keyword search at the top left of the page. This will bring up related chapters from any of Gail's eBooks. If you have a specific topic in mind, instead of doing a basic keyword search, you could do an advanced search. For this search, I'm going to look up animal rights and the law. That will give me results about legal information on animal rights. If I wanted to get moral or personal opinions about animal rights, I would say animal rights, not the law, instead. Those are the basics of Gale eBooks. Starting at the library's homepage, we'll select Research, then Research Central. Once there, click on Databases A to Z and go to E for Explora Secondary Schools. When you click this, you'll be prompted to log in with your library card number. Explora Secondary Schools is designed specifically for students and educators, grades 6 to 12. You can search by subject or keyword for full text books, journals, and other items including videos. The home page has a keyword search at the top and featured topics down below. One of the most popular featured topics is the current issues section. To do a keyword search, select a word related to your topic and type it into the search bar at the top of the page. We're going to look up hurricanes today. When we search for this, it's going to bring up a new page and the top result is going to be an overview on hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones. Sometimes you'll get an overview like this and sometimes you won't. On the left hand side of the page there's a refining feature. You can choose to select results that are full text which is automatically selected. You can adjust the year range from when the articles or results are published. You can also select what type of result you're interested in seeing, whether it be books, newspapers, magazines, etc. To perform an advanced search, click on the advanced search button under the basic keyword search bar at the top of the page. For this, we're going to be looking for Brazil, but not the Olympics. This will bring up results about Brazil the country and not the Olympics that took place in Brazil. If we wanted to get information on the Olympics that happened in Brazil, we would have selected Brazil and Olympics instead. 
Now I'm going to adjust the age of publication so that I'm looking at results published within the last 20 years or so. Then I'll select one of these articles to look at. Once you've found a resource you're interested in using, you'll find a few different options on how to use it. On the side, we have options to send it to Google Drive, print it, email it to yourself, add it to a folder, cite it, export it, or create a permalink for it. The citation is probably the most helpful of these tools. When you click on it, it will give you a pre-formatted, already generated citation in multiple different styles. You just need to scroll down and find the style you need for your class. While this does do most of the work for you, you still need to check the citation against whatever your handbook says. Sometimes there are some slight differences that you'll need to catch before turning it in. That is how to use Explora Secondary Schools. This next database is one of my all-time favorites. Start off by once again going to Databases A to Z on the library website. Once there, go down to L for lynda.com. When you click on lynda.com, it will prompt you to sign in with your library card number and PIN. If you've never signed into lynda.com before, it will ask you to create an account. Make sure to remember what your password is and write it down in a safe location. Library staff cannot reset or tell you what your password is. You have to reset your password through lynda.com if you forget it. lynda.com is a wonderful resource for visual learners. It allows you to watch educational, YouTube-style videos on a variety of different subjects. To search in lynda.com, type a keyword in the search bar at the top of the page. I'll be looking up videos on Google Drive. Once it comes up, you'll see videos in the center of the page. On the left-hand side are areas to refine your search. For example, I can choose to select to only see beginner level videos. This will adjust what I see in the center to only show me the basic essential trainings relevant to using Google Drive. This is a great way for you as a parent or educator to become familiar with some remote learning tools that you might not have used before. It's also a great resource to send to your students or children to help them become familiar with those same resources. Once you find a resource you'd like to use, click on it to bring up the full video. On the left hand side, you'll see different chapters. This allows you to pick and choose and only review the lessons that you need to learn. For example, you might already know some of the aspects of Google Drive. If you do, you can skip those sections and go on to new material. This is especially helpful if you have a student who's bored or who would like to learn more about a particular subject. They can come on here and look up any video that suits their interest. Are they interested in coding? No problem. Do they want to learn how to film and edit videos? These subjects and more are all available through lynda.com. If you're not sure where to start, lynda.com has a library that you can click on, which will give you a list of subjects to choose from. You can scroll through this until you come across one that suits your interests. There are also subject categories broken out for you on the home screen. There's a new category, a popular category, a recommended for you category, as well as a popular in your organization section. Under each of these categories are different subject headers. Those are gonna help you narrow down your search even further. Another great thing about lynda.com is that many of the courses have a completion certificate at the end. This allows you to obtain proof from your student or child that they did take the course. Those are the benefits of lynda.com. We'll start off by going back to databases A to Z and selecting Science Flicks. Science Flicks provides information about science through short videos, text resources, and interactive elements like quizzes and experiments. There's a whole section of cool experiments with step-by-step -step instructions and even questions to answer as they work. 
These experiments can be found by clicking on the Experiments tab at the top, which will highlight experiments to try as well as lab information. Back on the main page, there are six scientific categories. Those include Earth Science, Space Science, Life Science, Health and the Human Body, Physical Science, and Technology, Math, and Engineering. When you find a subject you're interested in, for example, planets here, you can click to get more information. Options will be available on the left side. You can click to watch information on it, to read information on it, you can get a deeper dive into the subject, as well as getting additional information from external websites. There are also labs, critical thinking questions, a unit quiz, and finally career information based on your topic. At the top of each page, there are options to read it aloud, look up words, email something to yourself, or to print it. And at the bottom of the page are different citations that you can use if you're using this for a paper. Back on the home page, you can also get an overview of many different careers in science by clicking on the Careers in Science tab at the top of the page. Now you can scroll through the results and select a career that interests you to get more information. It starts with a general overview of that field, followed by quick facts, which include education requirements, field growth, and current expected pay. Those are the basics of the Science Flix database. Following the same steps as before, go into databases A to Z on our website, but this time go to the P's for Points of View Reference Center. Then you'll need to log in with your card number. Points of View Reference Center provides current information on hotly debated topics, such as refugee resettlement, voter ID laws, and coronavirus. This database provides a topic overview as well as a point and counterpoint views for each subject. The material is collected from essays, news transcripts, and primary source documents. This is a fantastic resource for students who are developing a position paper or trying to get material for a debate. You can search for topics using a keyword or advanced search up at the top, or you can search through popular categories as you scroll down the page. Once you find a category that interests you, for example, censorship, you click on the More button and you can see many different topics underneath that category. Then you can select one of them to get more information. This brings you to a page on the topic that'll give you an overview, information on its history, as well as a complete bibliography at the end. Towards the right hand side, you'll notice that there's an extra icon that says point and an icon that says counterpoint. Clicking on either of these will take you to that viewpoint regarding this topic. On the right hand side of this article, we'll find some options we've seen earlier. We can send the article to the drive, save it to a folder, print it, email it to ourselves, save it, cite it, which is the most popular feature. Once again, this is going to bring up citations in many different formats. You just select the one you need for your class. If you know what topic you're looking for, you don't have to browse by a category on the home page. You can type it in directly in the search box at the top of the page. For this, we'll look up banned books. This will bring up a list of resources, points, counterpoints, as well as additional resources on banned books. As with other databases we've seen, it has options to refine your search on the left-hand side. You can refine this by full text, date of publication, the type of resource you're pulling, as well as a few other options. You can also do an advanced search in this database. The advanced search here looks a little bit different than in other databases we've looked at. 
Here, you have the option to limit it to full text or not. It should automatically be on, and I don't recommend you changing it. You can also limit by publication year, a range of publication years, the document types you want to see results for, the Lexile reading number, and other publication information. That's an overview of Points of View Reference Center. This next resource is a little bit different. It's technically not considered one of our databases. Instead, it's part of our e-collection. To get to our e-collection, I prefer to click on the large e-collection button on the homepage. This is right above where it says at the library. You could also get to this collection by clicking the collections button in the top right of the screen. Under collections, you'd click on e-collections. It will take you to the same place. Once there, you're going to scroll down and you'll see different tabs. Some tabs say ebooks, e-audiobooks, e-music, e-movies, and e-zines. Click on e-movies and scroll down to click on the Great Courses Library Collection. This brings you to a page that says Welcome at the top. You need to scroll down this page until you see where it says Entertainment and then select the Great Courses once again. This will bring up all of the classes available through Great Courses that you can start to look through. This is a very user-friendly database. It looks very similar to Netflix or Hulu style videos, so you can scroll down, find categories, and look through them in a similar way. For example, under Hobby and Leisure, you have Genealogy, Dog Training, Fundamentals of Photography 1 and 2, as well as a class on how colors affect you. Go ahead and click on any class you'd like to get started. Once you open it up, click the checkout button to prompt you to log in. If you've created an account before, go ahead and enter your username and password. Otherwise, go down to the bottom and click the register now button. Fill out the information to register an account and then click register when you're done. Once you've logged in, it will take you back to your video and give you a message that says you now have seven day unlimited access to all of the great courses videos. The video that you originally clicked on should now have a green access button that you can select. When you first get your seven day pass and click on the green access button, it will reopen a new tab of great courses. You will need to find the video you'd like to watch one more time and select it in order to see all of the lessons that you can take. Once you do that, you can start watching them automatically from your computer or device. Because each course gives you different lessons you can choose from, you can skip sections that you might already know or watch the entire course. Each of the lectures will tell you their run time so you can easily plan them into your busy schedule. If you find a video that interests you, but you don't currently have time to watch it, you can click on the video and click the blue watch list button to add it to your watch list. Then you can check your watch list later up at the top of the screen near the search bar. If you're looking for something to watch, you can go to the home page next to where it says categories and view all of their main subjects. This is a great way to quickly see what they have. If you have a specific topic in mind instead, go up to the search bar at the top and type it in. This will bring up any classes that they have on that subject. And that's it. That's how to use the Great Courses eCollection. Start off by going back to the Databases A to Z portion on the website and click on G for Gale Literature Resource Center. Then, you'll sign in using your library card number and PIN. Gale Literature Resource Center provides full-text articles and other information on over 130,000 writers across all disciplines. You can search by a person, the name or type of work, or a resource title. When you scroll down a little on the main page, you'll find a featured author as well as a featured work. Towards the top left of the page, you have a keyword search bar. Towards the middle of the page, on the right, you can do a person search, 
a works search, title search, view your search history, get a link of the current page you're on, or see your own highlights and notes. To complete a basic search, you just type in the author or title you're looking for in the search bar at the top of the page. We're looking for Edgar Allan Poe today. Your search takes you to a literary criticism page, but you can also choose to sort by biographies, reviews and news, or primary source and literary works. Once you select a resource, you have a few options. You can translate the article, adjust the font size, or listen to it. You can also send it to Google Drive or to the cloud. At the top of the screen, you also have options to cite the article or to print it directly. Going back to the main page of Gale Literature Resource Center, we can also look up Edgar Allan Poe through a person search that was mentioned briefly before. When we look for his name this way, we will immediately get some quick facts about him, including when he was born and how many works he has created. When we click on his name here, it will take us to that search page that looks like what we found before. One notable difference is that when you search in a person search, when you click on the biography section, the first option will be his official Edgar Allan Poe biography. For reasons that I honestly don't understand, when we do a keyword search like we did at the beginning, his official biography is not the first result under the biographies section. For that reason, I recommend that you do a person search if possible. Once you're on his official biography page, you'll have detailed information about your author and the works that they've created. You also have options at the top of the page to translate, enlarge the font, and do all of the other things that we looked at earlier. Now you know how to search and use Gale Literature Resource Center. Start off by going back to the Databases A to Z page on the library's website. Follow the instructions that we did before. Once you're there, click on V for very short introductions. When you click on that database, you'll need to log in with your card number. Welcome to Very Short Introductions, where it really is all in the name. These are basic introductions to topics you previously knew nothing about. You can browse topics by clicking on the Browse a Subject tab and going from there. Alternatively, if you already have a subject in mind, you can type it in the basic keyword search towards the top right of your screen. Once you click Browse by Subject, you can easily click on any of the links that interest you. For this search, we've clicked on Archaeology. There are ways to refine on the left, as well as introductions to archaeology in the center of the page. Clicking on one of those options will bring you to a table of contents where you can choose to read more. If you already have a subject in mind, enter the keyword at the top of the page in the search bar. For this search, I looked up abnormal psychology and I got back results on what is psychology, which gives me a general overview that includes the term abnormal psychology in it. When we click on a very short introduction of psychology, we will get an overview of the discipline as well as a table of contents field on the left hand side. That is how to use our very short introductions database. We at the Washington Centerville Public Library understand that things are working a little bit differently right now. Because of that, we wanted to create a dedicated page to help with remote learning. All of the databases that we've talked about in today's videos can be found on this page. Because we're not sure if this page will stay up forever, the video that we created does show how to access our databases through the traditional library website. We've divided the resources on this page into three main categories to help our students and educators find the resources that pertain the most to them. The first category is for students in kindergarten to fifth grade. The second category is for students from 6th grade to 12th grade. And the third category is for our educators. We will have the link to this remote learning page in the description of this video for you.